My name is Mitch Arthman. Uh, my undergraduate was in philosophy at the University of Chicago. I got a master's in education with a specialization in special education from Long Island University and a uh, master's in social work from UCLA. And I'm a licensed clinical social worker, which informs me a lot in terms of my uh, psychology teaching so that I can inform on theory, but also on how to have a clinical practice. I've always been fascinated with psychology. I've been fascinated with what motivates people to become who they are and what they are. I grew up with a grandfather who had been in the Holocaust and in World War II. So I heard a lot about the shadow side of humanity. So I was pulled in very quickly to psychology. Uh, it was my thinking type. I'm an introvert intuitive, so it's quite natural for me to try to understand how I'm wired and how others are wired. So for me, it's a capacity to having the unsaid be said and for picking up on the hidden patterns that really govern so much of our lives. It's an endlessly fascinating, lifelong obsession. In order to design my syllabus, I stop pretending I'm a teacher and I start to pretend that I'm a student. And I ask myself, what would engage me? What would be the thing that would make me feel sad when class ends? And I take it from there. So the first thing that I do is I try to relate to the student. You know, I learned these concepts in a textbook and it's one thing to sit with an addict and it's a whole other thing to think, how can I better understand this being? And then one day you're watching, I don't know, Lord of the Rings and you're looking at Gollum and Gollum is super, oh, just obsessed, obsessed, obsessed. And, right, and that's the mind of an addict. Gollum is exhibiting this and this and this psychopathology. Gollum is demonstrating to us the worldview of an addict. How can an addict possibly destroy their lives while fixating upon the object of their desire and being so tunnel vision of their obsessiveness? So I find ways that the students can relate to the material that draws them in and lets them understand that they already have the kind of thinking that is needed to relate to the material. And then they're in engaging intellectually but also in a manner that makes the material meaningful and enjoyable for them. When students take my course in Oxford summer courses, they can expect to be challenged. They can expect to be offered opportunities to think differently. They can be asked if they agree or disagree with anything and everything that is being taught and to offer their own insights. They can expect to learn new material in new ways, but also to look back at older material that they knew before and consider it in older ways as well. You can apply older ideas and give them some new context, right? And in this sense, you're creating synthetic thought. You're taking one group of ideas, another group, and then bringing them together to create a third kind of learning. And that's what I'm really interested in. I'm interested in teaching students not just what to think, I'm interested in them thinking like themselves, not like thinking like me, but I'm interested in teaching them new ways to think, interested in giving them new tools to turn over old and new leaves and take on fresh insights. Oxford summer courses is different from other schools in the freedom that they give the tutor. I was allowed to create my own psychology course from the ground up, and that helped me so much in understanding what material would best work for a student, how I would best be able to deliver it, how I could fine tune it to the interests and the learning style of each student so that I never teach the same course twice. Her Heraclitus has that statement, you know, no one ever stepped into the same river twice. No one should ever teach the same course twice. Even if it seems to be the same material for a similar student, you really should be understanding how you are giving this material to these students. And when you start to take into your own awareness, the consciousness of your students, you start to take into awareness the optimal way to teach. And Oxford Summer Courses has always given me that freedom. And from that freedom, I've tried to optimize the best purpose I can in the pedagogy. Mm -hmm.